Sibelius gives you another couple of options as far as inputting notes is concerned via a couple of floating panels. And the one we're going to look at in this video is the keyboard panel. Now you access the keyboard panel from the view tab and over in the panels group, bring it down there and there's a the keyboard panel there. And there's what the keyboard panel looks like. Now a couple of things first of all to point out is this view button here changes the size of it. Gives you three different sizes. I tend to leave it in the middle. And also, as with all floating panels, um, you can actually undock it from the bottom of the screen. To redock it, you just double click on the title bar and it will redock back down the bottom. So what can you do with it? Well, we're looking at, again, the demo file here. Um, and if I, first of all, point out this area here, this drop down box here, this gives you a list of all the instruments in your score plus these two options at the top, Auto and All Staves. If I click on All Staves at the moment and hit P for Play, you can see it's showing you the notes on the keyboard that are being played in the score. Which is very nice, nice and fancy and decorative. If I drop this down to one of the instruments, uh, let's say I go for Violin 1, and I'll move the score over to where the violin one comes in. That would make sense, wouldn't it? There we go. Start playing from there. It will just show you the violin one part. So that's all very nice. However, this video is about inputting notes. So let's switch to a blank file and we'll start inputting some notes using the keyboard panel. So here we have a blank file, and you'll notice the keyboard panel isn't showing, so I'll just go and turn it back on again. There it's there. Now, if you're going to use it to input notes, you're looking at these buttons here. Okay, You use it in conjunction with the keypad or the numeric keypad, either on screen or on, the, on your keyboard. It's in six and a half a dozen. I'm going to do it on screen so you can see what I'm doing. You use it in the same way that you would use a real physical keyboard. So, for example, I can... Pick the first note, then it's there. With that note length selected, I can then carry on and putting more notes from there. I can change the note values. And carry on like so. And escape, of course, to finish. It's all very straightforward. If I want to input a chord, let's say, at the moment I'm in a single note mode. So if I, if I press this button here and I get into chord mode, so let me show you how that works. Um, I'm going to put a chord in here. Um, I would then, there's that note that I've just played, add that note and add that note. Click this button to move on to the next chord. etc, etc, etc. So inputting notes and chords, very easy. However, one of the strongest features of the keyboard panel is this button here. Let me come out of chord mode first of all. This button here. This turns on what's called QWERTY input. And when you click it, one octave of the keyboard is highlighted. You can change what octave that is by using the Z and X key. So Z will move it down an octave. X will move it up. C4 is middle C. And the way this works is now, if you look at your computer keyboard, the letters A to K correspond now to these notes here. And of course, the letter W will correspond to the C sharp. The letter E will correspond to the D sharp, etc, etc, etc. So I can now use my keyboard as a MIDI keyboard. So for example, let me show you this, I'm going to put the first one in. Personal preference, I always put the first one in with the mouse. I can then, if I type the letter S, then D, then F, then G, then H, then J, then K, you can see what's happened. I've put the notes in from the octave from C major, so I'm, I'm using my letters on the keyboard to correspond to that octave 
there. Coming back down, I'll do it chromatically this time so you can see what happens. I'll do the K, then the J, then the U, then the H, then the Y, then the G, then the T, then the F, then the D, then the E, then the S, then the W, and then the A. And escape to finish. One very strong piece of advice is that when you finish using your on-screen keyboard in QWERTY mode, click the button to take it out of QWERTY mode. All these letters you've been pressing on the keyboard tend to be one uh, single key shortcuts for other things and it can sometimes cause weird things to start happening later on when you're using Sibelius because Sibelius is still in QWERTY mode even if the keyboard isn't showing on the screen. So you can use your QWERTY keyboard to correspond to the, the notes from C to C, which means that you can play your computer like a piano.